I got a brand new brewery to taste today. We got Aslan's Cortez and his Men IPA. I've never had anything from Aslan before. Sometimes their stuff would be on tap up here, but I never tried any of it. Um, no date on the can, but pretty sure this is very fresh, like 10 days old or something like that. Um, so this is Citra, Eldorado, and Chinook Hops. Combo that sounds very tasty to me. 7% alcohol. And I've never, I don't even have any friends who have heard talk about trying Aslan beer. But yeah, they're definitely one of the more hip breweries down south. Sort of in the south. Um, so I've heard of them. Um, but this is the first time I think any of their cans have been shipped up here. So I'm kind of excited, but I really don't know what to expect. This beer doesn't have crazy high ratings. It has like almost a 4.1 or something on Untapped. Um, but who knows? It really, you can't tell from the ratings. And yep, I saw pictures of this before and it's super pale and hazy. And it wasn't that expensive either, which is pretty cool. And it looks rather nice. Head's pretty good. Label's pretty interesting. Don't know why it's called Cortez and His Men. I know the whole story about Cortez and the conquistadors. Um, they say to store at 35 to 45 degrees. I don't say if you're supposed to drink at that. I had this, I was very chilled. I got one of these cool things like freezer packs. This is meant for wine bottles, but works fine for beer for cooling things off really, really quickly. Yeah, it's quite pale and hazy. No finger seen at all through there. Mmm, that smells nice. I love the addition of the Chinook. Actually, the other Citrus Chinook beer that I really like um, is from way up north, River Roost in Vermont. And I've had I've a review of that. That one's really nice. I feel like that one's probably maybe a little sweeter and more estuary. Yeah, there's some yeastiness going on, but I feel like there's a lot of the juicy fruit gum and like tropical creamsicle stuff coming from the citra, but then the Chinook's bringing a little bit of a woodsy green pop. It's, yeah, I guess I would say it's piney, but it's not. Um, overwhelmingly West Coast IPA type buying this. And the Eldorado's bringing in Jolly Rancher type stuff. I think it smells pretty nice. Mm. Similar flavors. Very, very low in the bitterness. I thought I might have a little more bitterness. It'll probably build up. <clears throat> um, but the citra is kind of leading the show. It's, it's big on the citra. And the mouthfeel isn't quite as full as you might think from 7% and something that looks like this. Very tangy, lots of juicy fruit gum flavor. <laughs> this is actually a lot like River Roost's um, Moss Verde, actually. Um, but... That one might be a little bit fuller bodied or sweeter or something. Let's see what happens when I pour in the bottom of the can. Nice creamy head. And yeah, now it's a little bit hazier. I don't see any chunks, but this is a super fresh can. Yeah, nice head. Yeah, the the feel, though it isn't gigantic, it's still pretty thick and creamy. But it leaves a aftertaste. It's a lot like tang, in addition to juicy fruit gum. It doesn't quite jump all the way to you know classic bu just bubble gum. But a lot of candy-like things happening. I almost wish that the Chinook was a little bit stronger. It's just kind of hints of pininess, but it gets 
overwhelmed by all the candies and fruitiness. It's not like exactly peach or pineapple. But flavor is kind of like that, but it's this really tangy quality that reminds me of you know, fruit cocktails. It isn't super tropical, super juicy. It's more candy like no, it's, it's more what I've come to expect from a lot of breweries, especially as, I, as I've been saying, is breweries who are making hazy stuff that aren't in New England. A lot of the ones in New England are making them actually a little bit bitter and dry. And this one is not that. There's a little bit of heat in the throat lingering, but no real like, no big, big problems or anything. But I'm still thinking like it's not nearly as intense and thick and flavorful as Fiddlehead IPA, and that doesn't use any sexy new wave hops, and it's only 6.2% alcohol. And I still have four of my stove top pipe cans from the case I bought like a month ago. I'm glad I did that. And but I'm not upset that I got this one. It's very good. I can see a lot of people are really liking it. Um, I, I'm kind of surprised it doesn't have higher ratings because it's, it's just so citra heavy. It seems like it's the sort of thing that most people want these days. Maybe it's because it isn't, in my opinion, like ultra juicy. It's not ultra dank either. It just got this super juicy fruit gum, sunny delight type tanginess. Like tang too. Maybe I sh what I should be doing is buying sunny delight and getting tang and seeing if that's actually what this tastes like because I haven't had either of those in you know at least 20 years um but it's very very nice i don't know it's probably gonna be hard to get your hands on this in the boston area but maybe a little and some more um it's definitely worth it for 15 bucks a four pack if this is the sort of thing you like if you like your really citra forward beers that are just a little sweet it's not it's not too sweet this almost reminds me a little bit of frost like Frost Beer Works and River Roost, it's sort of like those. So those are the two uh, Vermont brewers who, their, their IPAs tend to be rather sweet in my opinion. They're good, but you gotta be in the mood for it. I think I like River Roost a little more because theirs can be really super juicy and fruity. Whereas Frost Beer Works, those ones are really big on the candy notes. This is maybe somewhere in between. But very enjoyable, this is four plus. I guess. In other, on other days, I'd probably give it a 4.25. But, yeah. Aslan is not bad.